two kids in the same yeah. kindergarten. Yeah. One named Sam. What do you, what do you and like one about Sam? Chris. One morning, Chris said. Because he listens and he says what happens next and stuff. Then he goes upstairs. While Sam encourages his playmates to make up stories, his own are all pre-recorded. Okay, my turn. Two kids walked up the stairs until... But another character in Justine's lab, a lot less wholesome looking than Sam, is able to put together sentences on the fly. If you want it to speak, you just have to type something. <laughs> in a way, beat actually is sort of like text to speech, except that it's not only producing the speech, it's producing the gesture that goes along with the speech. Right. So it takes us input text and outputs and the animation script that a character can execute. This is both good news and bad news. Okay, and well, that's really interesting. He goes, this is both good news and bad news. Which is, by the way, exactly what you what did. What I did, I know. <laughs> yeah. But how did he... Wait a minute. He got it from both, huh? No. He... How did he know that there was this and this? Right. Because one of the things that it knows about the world is that there are sets of things in which one stands in contrast to the other. So we'll let you type in a bunch of other sentences that have contrast in them, okay. and you'll see that it'll always understand if it has that knowledge in its database. Okay. Sometimes I like blue things, and sometimes I like red things. No, he says this <laughs> news. <laughs> Why did he point towards the truck? I mean, he knows. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, oh wait, wait. The, the truck is blue. It's blue, actually. Yeah. But but he pointed to that when he said red. Let me hear it again. I think I was reminding you that he actually likes blue better. Sometimes I like blue things, and sometimes I like red things. Now. Now. No. Why did he do it differently the second time? Well, don't ask me. I didn't make. I didn't invent it. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you. It's a I, Socratic oh, method. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing if that's in you somewhere, but since it isn't, I'll tell you. Yeah. So, in fact, not only does this system have a model of the world, it also has something else that we have, which is a model of what we've said previously. And he knows that he already said blue thing. So there's no need to gesture to it again. Right. You share it now. I was just... Beat also knows a little about where he's standing. He actually knows what the scene looks like. Uh -huh. I was just visiting the media lab. So he knows where the media lab is and is yeah. able to point at it. Let's see how he says a new sentence mentioning the lab. Okay. Soon the media lab will have another building attached to it. It's just yeah. a little half gesture toward the... Exactly. Toward. That, that half gesture, he's gesturing when he's saying the new thing, another yeah. building attached yeah. to it. Yeah. Because that catches your interest and yeah. pulls you to the contentful part of the, the sentence. Then let me see what he does if it'll, I let him say it again. Okay. He would, probably won't make that same gesture, will he? Right. Soon the media lab will have another building attached to it. You see? It's almost in response to the unspoken question, what was that you said? Because he's just telling you the words. Exactly. Okay. Yep. If I do it again, will he give me a look like I told you already? <laughs> <laughs> He'll start rolling <laughs> his that? eyes yeah. when he yeah. speaks. I really like the ultimate actor. Giving a cartoon character the ability to interpret yeah. typed speech as if he understands it may be useful to animators, but it isn't yet a threat to the <laughs> acting profession. Not easier than dealing with a real actor. That's you, he's pointing at. <laughs> and what we did to do this was he already knows that in his.